Yes, I don't know. I, 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 I. Good morning, my beautiful people. How's it going? My name is Mike Vasile, and in today's video, we're gonna go talk about the 35 ways to really live on the cheap. You know, from traveling around the world and finding the cheapest way to live out of seriously a backpack and owning only less than a hundred things before I moved to Bali. I want to give you guys the entire scoop. So that being said, welcome to the show. Hey guys, Mike Vasile, welcome to my channel. If you are new to this channel and you like all things passive income, make money online, passive income, I already said that, saving money, investing money, traveling, and living on the cheap, minimalism, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And uh, I just wanna applaud you for doing that because it really does help out the channel. But with that being said, I want to do a review on a blog post I saw today and kind of like give my two cents on the actual necessities when it comes to not just living cheap, but to do it in a way where you don't feel like you hate your life, right? Where you know you have to live on the ramen noodle diet or the dollar menu diet, or you feel like you're not actually living your life and you're allowing your life to pass by. Because I think the, the, the reason why we live on this earth is to actually experience things instead of just really preventing ourselves from feeling happiness until we make enough money, right? So I wanted to go over this and just break down my thoughts on it. So this post is written by budgetingcouple.com by Vanetta Luss. And it's she goes over how to live cheap, 32 easy cheap living tips. There's some things I agreed with it. There's also some things I did not disagree with. And I think there's an, a lot easier way to actually live cheaper. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because, you know, it's really hard watching content or reading content because not only number one, do you, are you trying to get your problem solved? But number two, like from the content creator's point of view, and I know this because I'm a content creator and I understand the psychology of why people read. Sometimes you create just these long lists that is really just good for marketing, right? So even though some of these steps were really good and I wanted to give you my steps on how you could even simplify this entire process, sometimes we need to just put a bunch of steps on a blog article just so that people will click on it. That's just the plain truth, right? People psychologically are very attracted to certain numbers, especially odd numbers, as well as long lists. And even though that's good for marketing, I'm trying to get people results by having them take action. Right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over these things, but I'm gonna give you guys the no BS approach. Actually, before I do and go over this, I'm just gonna simplify your entire life, right? If you wanna live cheaply and you want to actually, and, and I'm curious, do you wanna live cheaply? If you're someone that wants to live cheaply, this is what I would actually recommend. Number one, find a way to detach from your job. So either have an online job, which is very low risk. I have a bunch of videos below teaching you how to make 20 to $200 with a job. And you can either do that or start your own online business. The second one is leave the country. I know it sounds weird. It sounds a little extreme, trust me. I've been doing this for years, Thailand, Bali, Portugal, you name it. I've literally found a way to make money online. And now I live in cheaper countries so that I don't have to spend the egregious amount of things when it comes to food, right? Like five or $10 at Chipotle when I can literally get like a five course meal for five or $10 here in Asia. And number three, practice minimalism. So I just added three to these 32 steps. If you just do that and you just found a way to just allow yourself to do that, I will promise you, not only will you find a way to live more cheap, but you'll also be able to experience more life which isn't that the goal with it, like said, to live cheap. The reason why we want to live cheap isn't just so we live cheap forever, but we could actually have more of life. And if you do that, those three things, like I said, start an online business or work an online job, you could check the links below. I have a bunch of YouTube videos on how to make 20 to $200 an hour. Number two, leave the country, especially when things like open up. I don't know if you can do it now, but you know, start finding a way to detach yourself, maybe from your job. And it might be actually easier now because of the fact that, you know, a lot of people are now forced to work at home. So, you know, you read the book, The 4-Hour Work Week, you can literally convince your boss that you're more productive working from home. And then when you're able to work from home, then you don't have to stay at home and you can just start traveling. 
like what I did. Second thing, live in a cheaper country. And you don't have to be stingy in some of these countries, right? Like if you look at this, like look at all these places on nomad list. This is where a lot of all the people that are kind of like me, we work online, they call digital nomads or whatnot. You could live in Lisbon, Bali, Berlin, Chiang Mai. I lived in multiple one of these cities and countries and you could see the overall cost of living. $1,000 a month, $1,400 a month, $1,000 a month. This is where my sister's at, right? $1,200 a month. This is with everything, food, rent, water, salsa dancing lessons, all that is included. I don't care who you are. Me living a great life in here is still a lot cheaper than someone living off of ramen noodles in San Francisco. It's just because of the location, right? You make in the US dollar with your online business, then you go into another place in the world that's cheaper, live your life. But then you, of course, start accidentally saving money, which is what this step is designed to do. And the third step is practicing minimalism. Try owning less than 100 things. Other than this camera equipment, I don't have that much t-shirts and shorts and underwear. For the longest time, I only had three pairs of underwear, right? So I don't care who you are or what blogger you are. I bet you, you haven't been as minimalist as me with me owning three pairs of underwear. Like, let's just count how much underwear you own if you think you're a minimalist. I doubt that you have less than three pairs of underwear and it's so little that I don't even wash them in laundries anymore. I just wash them in the sink and they just hang dry, right? To save even more money because that's how minimalist I am. But with that being said, let's just go on with the other 32. I gave you three. If you go on with those three, you could be so well. So I already hear you, Mike. Thank you guys so much. You're so amazing. You know, you're the funniest person in the world, but sometimes you're not. And if you just did that, you could go ahead and find your way to live cheaply. But with that being said, let's just go on with the rest of the 32 uh, cheap living uh, tips with budgeting couple. And we could just see if they're good or not. So the first ones that they're going over is Ibotta, Dosh, Rakuten, credit cards. A lot of these are basically obvious when it comes to living on the cheap. One thing though is this is more so about changing the habits of how you're already spending money, right? So essentially for you to make money in these processes, you're actually going to have to spend money, which is something we don't want to do unless you leverage the hack that I did where you could leverage other people's money and get cash back from those dollar bills. I made a bunch of videos before. I'm not going to repeat myself again. But that's essentially what the first couple steps is. It's like, okay, you're going to spend on Walmart, on Target, on Walgreens, on gas, on Patagonia. You're getting all these percent cash back. How are you living on the cheap if you're still going to be spending on these habits? Right. That's why, like, one of the things that I don't understand with um, this specific blog article, even though they're all amazing tricks and tips and whatnot, is for me, my goal with this channel isn't to just, you know, give you guys the latest hacks and tricks to, to allow yourself to live your life and stuff like that, because that's on the surface level, right? I'm trying to change people's experiences by changing their philosophy when it comes to money. Certain apps like this, yeah, you could make money by doing the things that you're already doing. Like you're already going to go grocery shopping. So of course you could use the Dosh app and make money at Walmart. 3%. Wow. So every $100 you spend on Walmart, you make $3. That's not living cheaply, right? That's not living frugally. If anything, it's still allowing you to get into this consumeristic part of your life. Right, so even though that's the case and these apps do work and I've made videos before on how you could actually make money with this because it's, it's essentially free money. A better way is to just buy in bulk the things that you're already buying. Like for example, for me here in uh, Bali, you know, I don't buy food at restaurants anymore even though it's already really cheap. I go straight to the supplier. I buy like six kilos of steak at a time. I buy four kilos of fish at a time. I buy like 36 eggs at a time. If you look at my kitchen, it's just filled with all these eggs. Or just look at my vlogs. Um, you can see just how the entire setup is. I can put it again in the link below. If you notice what I did there, what that did isn't just allow myself to get a hack to get free money because that's not gonna create ultimate freedom for yourself, right? What that did though is I'm changing my behavior. If I'm used to spending on these apps and spending $100, $300, $500 on, on the groceries per month, that's not changing my behavior that will ultimately allow myself to live cheap, right? So that's why, you know, for the first couple ones, I don't really necessarily agree with them. Same with Rakuten. It's because it, it just promotes more spending, right? And cheap living doesn't come from buying more things, even though you're already making money with the things that you're already doing. It's by subtracting more from your life so that you could experience more of your life. And the only reason why I would recommend this is if you have an online business and you could leverage other people's money 
to then get cash back on other people's money, which is what I do, right? Like I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll come in here and I'll get 3% cash back off a hundred dollars, but it's not my a hundred dollars. I, I have someone else spend a hundred dollars and I get 3% of that. I have someone else spend a thousand dollars and I get 30 bucks on that. What I'm trying to do with this cheap living is to also allow yourself to give that freedom to make the right decisions so that you can set yourself financially up for life, which is the reason why to live cheap in the beginning. It's not so that you could live cheap forever, but it's so you get the habits and the identity of what it means to be wealthy by not making poor mistakes on your finances when it comes to just spending more things, which all these apps will do will just spend more things because you're like, oh man, I'm making $3 for every $100 I spend. But it's not training the right part of your brain that will create success for you. And it goes all the way up to six. It's the exact same thing. It's literally just apps that make you money for the money that you're already spending. Which like I said, the reason why I disagree is because sometimes you don't even have to spend the money in the first place. So that's just fixing the band-aid solution when in fact you could go straight to the problem and that's your financial literacy on the fact that they never taught us financial literacy. The seven one I completely agree with, it's the trim app. Now this is something that cancels your unused subscriptions. So the thing about living cheaply, the reason why I agree with this and the reason why it's genius is because you know how much subscriptions you use that you don't know you're even using and it's because it's $5 here and $7 there. You're just spending a bunch of things that you forget because we're, we're, we're lazy. We just see, oh, that's $5. I'll just deal with that later on or that's $7. But that money adds up. And not only that, but when you think of the potential that you're losing when you could have invested that money, in like an index fund, in some other thing, or even like a high yield savings account, that turns into thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in a span of 30 to 40 years. So this is something that I would definitely recommend because like I said, at the end of the day, cheap living isn't to just fix your little buying problem, kind of like you, kind of like a smoking problem where you're just putting a patch on and you're just trying to get rid of your addiction to cigarettes. That's not going to change behavior. What changes behavior is an actual identity change. This does help. It's like training wheels. But what if you're just somebody that doesn't buy useless subscriptions? What I did uh, last month, actually, and we do this every so now, Often we go up to our bank and we just say, Hey, we lost our credit cards. We lost our debit cards. And because of that, it just, we get whole new credit card and debit card numbers. And you know what that actually does? It does what this does automatically. And the next month comes when the subscription is going for, guess what? All of the ones, all the subscriptions that we have are just canceled, right? So then we get the email notifications and then we really get to decide, okay, do I really need the subscription or not? So other than just getting the trim app, what you can do is just change all of your debit card and credit card numbers that you use to pay your bills. And then the next month, you're getting all of these email notifications saying, you need to change your credit card. No. And then you get to decide which bills you actually want to pay and which one you don't. Makey sensey. So the eighth one is CIT, CIT bank, grow your savings faster. That's good. You know, you get a higher percent cash growth in money just sitting there. That's awesome. But like I said, and this is something that's good but like I said, if the goal is to live cheap, not only do you need a high savings account, so that's something that anyone needs. So this is something that, you know, they did pretty well on. Cushion app, what is the cushion app? Refunds on your bank fees? I guess this is the case. Sometimes when I look at my account, I see some random fees and then I do have to call my bank and I'm like, yo, what's going on? What's it? They're like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. We'll just waive the fee. So I guess it's a really good smart one. You could just check it out. I'll put this blog post in the link below. 10 is Mint Mobile. I guess it is a contract-free cell phone service provider powered by T-Mobile. Uh, one of the things, uh, especially that I've realized when I started traveling is you don't actually need cell phones anymore. So this might even be an extra unnecessary response. Like for example, for me, all my phones are literally burner phones. I know it sounds weird and sketchy, but it's because I travel so many places, right? Especially when the world was open, I was bouncing back between Singapore to Bali to Thailand to Philippines and every single place required a SIM card, right? So what I do is I just have like a regular Galaxy phone. It's just like a burner phone that I don't really go on, which is good because then I'm not addicted to social media like how I used to be when I was with my iPhone. And I just like switch the SIM cards when I actually need it. But guess what? When I didn't need the SIM cards, no one can contact me, which allowed me to just focus more on building my online business and finding more ways to create multiple streams of income, right? So actually, I don't know, sometimes having a phone 
is not good because you're just distracted by so many things. One thing that I just do now is I only use Messenger to contact people. And then most of the time my phone is on airplane mode. So it didn't even make sense to get a SIM card anymore. So now I don't even have a SIM card. I, I don't really miss it that much. And when people want to contact me, they either use WhatsApp or Messenger. And I'm so much more happier and more distraction free. And I spend less money. 11 one is buy use electronics. Here's the thing. What if you don't buy, you don't need electronics here. That's another thing, right? People think that they need electronics and that just goes and feeds this part of our brain when we just want to consume and we want to just buy things. I don't think this one's actually needed. It's just one of those fluffer things to have a big list so that you could rank. And like I said, I'm guilty for this. I have a bunch of big lists too, because I know it's going to rank and get attention. But like I said, it's not necessarily needed. Another one is like, check your local library, which is like a very interesting thing. Um, I think it's a little bit outdated. I don't know. What are your thoughts? You know, we live in a world where everything can get access through your phone, right? Like my, my education in my library is YouTube, Kindle, and Audible. Like I've learned so much from saving, investing, and making money and minimalism just from that, that I don't even think that you actually have to go to your local library because the thing about that is that requires gas money and you going there and back. So multiply that over a couple of years, you're probably spending more than you could just staying in one location and just reading all the books. Now they're talking about saving food. So let's just go through it. Meal plan, home chef, what? Healthy foods, Vitacost, Thrive Market. So all these places are marketplaces, shopping lists, don't shop hungry, drink water. That's pretty interesting. Let me just break down that list, I guess, of 10 things. Frozen over fresh fruits and vegetables. This is another reason why I moved, okay? Because when you're in America, and I know this, a lot of people are like, Mike, you can't, I can't move right now. I'm stuck in quarantine. Find a way to make money online so that when the world opens up and the travel restrictions are gone, you could then start traveling, okay? This is just the perfect time for you to get in a hustle mode and figure out a way to work online so that when the world opens, you could leave and start doing this, right? So like I said, get an online job or start an online business. Simple as that. More, are you less risk tolerant? Get an online job. Are you want more freedom? Start an online business. Check the links below. The reason why, like I said, sometimes when it comes to cheap living, it's not about adding more things into your life like meal plan and a chef. It's by subtracting things and finding out that you're still happy. So the reason why when I moved to Asia, life just became simpler. It's the same exact reason, like for example, with the debit cards and credit cards. When you cancel your debit and credit cards and you get new ones, you find out all the useless subscriptions that you no longer have to pay for. When I left America, I realized all of the necessities that I realized were no, no longer necessitable anymore. Like going grocery shopping, fresh, getting frozen fruits over vegetables, which is disgusting. How are you going to live off of frozen fruits and vegetables if you don't, if you don't want to just eat smoothies every day, right? So for example, let me tell you my lifestyle. Okay. I literally live, like I said, I don't know if I told you this, but I live in Asia, right? People deliver five kilos of fresh steak ribeye to me every other week. All of these are locally farmed, meaning they're sustainable and they're more healthy. They don't have like the GMO stuff that's just like in all of like the meat that we're eating. The fruits are just down the street. I see the chickens running around. Like I said, look at my old vlogs. I'll put some of my vlogs below on just what life is like in Bali. I barely wear clothes, so I don't even have to worry about buying clothes. The food gets delivered. The fruit is fresh and it's cheap because it literally grows outside. And instead of going where all of the foreigners go grocery shopping, I go to where all of the Indonesians go grocery shopping. So I pay local prices, right? Because the average salary here in Indonesia is like 200 or $400 a month, right? So imagine this, you're trying to be minimalism in living on the cheap. There's people with families here that only make 200 to $400 a month and they're doing just fine because the cost of living here is so much cheaper. That's what I'm doing here, except now I'm earning a lot from the US but I'm saving in by how much I'm actually spending. Number 10, same thing, try grocery store apps. That's just completely minimized when you just leave the country. 11, chew gum? What? Here's a cheap and easy way to save money on food, chew gum. Here's another cheap way, try intermittent fasting, right? I'm not a health professional, I'm not a doctor, consult your local healthcare provider, but I only eat two meals a day and they're huge meals. I eat a lot of locally grown foods, so it's either vegetables or eggs from the chickens down the street cows that live down the street, goat, organs, all of it's really cheap. I spend maybe five, $10 a day on food and I'll eat good. Chew gum, chew gum. Is gum even healthy? 
I'm pretty sure that adds up. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Is gum healthy? I don't know. I think that's BS advice. Chew gum. Eat at home. That's something that I agree. I constantly eat at home. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty extreme, which I found out talking to my girlfriend. She likes eating out and stuff like that. And her cost is about like 10 to $20 a day when she eats out. I'm like extremely minimalism where I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to start buying the vegetables and cooking it here. And I feel good. You know, I'm starting to learn how to cook. I'm eating the food. I feel more connected with my food. And I'm a lot more grateful because I kind of did the hard work to make it myself. Right. So that's what I've been doing. So and I've been saving a lot of money. Like I thought I was saving money before by living in Asia, but then I started doing the frugal minimalistic tricks that you would normally do in like San Francisco. And now I'm like, like saving so much more money. Use napkins. What if you don't use napkins at all? Your hand is perfectly fine. Or a t-shirt. Or just have friends that don't care if you have, they have stuff on your mouth. And then I guess they go through all of the things that you could just buy floss, re-insulate your home. Another great way to save money on your energy costs is by insulating your home. Homes are full of crevices. Plug those leaks, especially around your windows and doors to save money on your bills. See, this is why I just don't understand it, right? Because like I said, a lot of these problems could be fixed when you just don't follow the traditional pathway of get a mortgage, get a house, get a big house. You have to buy a bunch of things. You would get a big refrigerator. So you have to fill it with a bunch of food. It just doesn't make any sense. I think we're moving to the world where the world is turning to be, it's becoming borderless, right? So you're no longer going to be associated by a nationality or a city or a state or a country because more and more people are working online. We can move about. We're not going to have to worry about, you know, crevices and energy bills because the business owner that owns the Airbnb would have to worry about that. Like what happens with me? Like a couple weeks ago, we had a mice problem and then we had the owner take care of that. And that's basically it. Thank you so much, Vanetta Lusk, for coming in and uh, giving your two cents. I'm really curious, how you guys are saving money? How you guys are practicing cheap living? Like I said, a lot of these were good advice, but I think a lot of this could also get simplified by just following the basics. Work online, 20 to $200 an hour job, a free YouTube video, check it out below, or start an online business. Number two, leave America. Oh Mike, but I don't know, you don't have to stay there and you could live in all of these tropical locations. Let's look at this. Look at these sights and scenes around the world. And these are what people are doing. This is what the site is literally made for, to share with you what other places around the world you could live in, right? And I've been in Georgetown and Warsaw and Porto, Portugal and Toronto. Okay, Toronto is weird. Look at this. Three grand a month for Melbourne or Toronto in Australia or Toronto or Canada, and you could see why some of these people live even cheaper. You save $1,000 living in Lisbon, $2,000 living in Chiang Mai. Like I said, let's pull this up. This is the thing. You could start seeing if it's good with family, if it's good with internet, the air quality, the safety, quality score, happiness, friendly to foreigners, nightlife, peace, hospitals, LGBTQ, friendly. Like there's, <laughs> like that's why I don't understand. I think the reason why I want to make this channel is I just want to open up your mind to what is actually out there because there is a there is a world out there and you don't have to die in the same city that you were born in, that you went to high school in, that you went to college in, that, you, that, that you've never seen out there. And like I said, this was my worst fear. This was my worst fear. And the reason why I wanted to live cheaply and frugally was so that I could start doing this, guys. So hopefully this helps. Comment below what you like best. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and leave a like if you feel generous. And I hope you do. And for everyone else, I'm just gonna go talk more about raw mindset stuff on my second channel. So subscribe to my second channel as well. All the links are in the description. Thank you so much, Budgeting Couple, for giving your advice. I agreed with a good amount of stuff. Some things I did not agree so much with, but like I said, a lot of it was good value. So I really appreciate you guys for creating this content. And with everyone else, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Love you guys. <laughs> okay, peace out.